Disc golf began on the west coast. Players used their regular catch discs and played in parks or other open spaces. They would pick an existing object, such as a tree or a light post, and try to make contact with it in the fewest number of throws possible. Today, it has grown into a worldwide phenomenon, with specialized discs, pay courses, and professional players. In this video, I'm going to explain how this game is played, as well as some of the specialized terms disc golfers use. As the name suggests, disc golf is essentially golf, played with a disc instead of a ball and clubs. There are specific discs for driving and putting, as well as approach discs, which are the equivalent of wedges. I'll get into the differences between these types of discs in a moment. One of the major differences between golf and disc golf is in the target. Instead of a cup, such as that used in golf, the target in disc golf is a raised basket with chains suspended above it. The chains are intended to cause discs striking them to fall into the basket below. Of course, there are no guarantees. Because disc golf is less dependent upon the quality of the surface, courses can utilize far more rugged terrain. This is an extreme example, however. Most courses will be much more moderate. Once you have a course picked out, the next step is to select a disc or collection of discs to use. This aspect of disc golf is often overwhelming to new players. With so many names, numbers, and colors, it's difficult to know what's important to pay attention to. The first, most important, and most complicated decision is a choice of driver. There are more models of driver than any other type of disc. The reason for this is the much more pronounced aerodynamic effects, which come into play at high speed. The decision can be made vastly simpler for the beginner by recognizing that most drivers are designed to be thrown at speeds higher than would be possible when just starting out. It is important to note that the flight characteristics of a disc are dependent upon the speed at which it is thrown. Therefore, it is not a simple matter of slower throws going a shorter distance. In fact, increasing the speed beyond a certain point will result in shorter throws as well. To see why, it is necessary to understand some of the forces which act upon a flying disc. All discs have an inherent tendency to turn away from the direction of spin. This is known as the fade. Thus a disc thrown with the right hand backhand will bank to the left. There is a counteracting force of turn, which is exhibited at high speeds and decreases throughout the flight of the disc. The balance of these two forces determines what is called the stability. If a disc generates little turn even at high speeds, and thus always tends to the left, it is termed overstable. An understable disc generates a large amount of turn, so a disc will begin its flight banking to the right, then as it slows, fading back to the left. This characteristic flight pattern is called an S-curve. An understable driver is a much better choice for a beginning player, since it will go straight at lower speeds than one which is overstable. Another important factor in determining the flight path of a disc is the angle of release. This too has its own specialized terminology. When a disc is thrown so that as it leaves the hand, it is angled in the direction which it will begin to fade, this throw is called a hyzer. This is not an exotic or specialized technique. In fact, it's the first throw that most people learn with any type of disc. The opposite of this is the anhyzer, in which the disc is angled away from the direction it will tend to fade. While this throw is somewhat more difficult to execute, it has the advantage that, instead of increasing its angle to the ground throughout its flight, a disc thrown with an anhyzer begins angled and then flattens out. Of course, these descriptions and examples barely begin to scratch the surface of the great variety of possible throws. Basically, any type of throw you can come up with is legal, provided you don't advance beyond the spot where your previous throw landed until after the disc is released. Disc golf is a game of creativity, composure, and concentration. It is an activity that can be enjoyed by all ages and all skill levels. I hope this video has piqued your interest, as well as providing you with an understanding of how the game is played and some of the jargon which is used when discussing it. If you do decide to give it a shot, don't get discouraged. 
It takes a long time to become consistent, and even the pros make mistakes. You never know, though, when one of these mistakes might turn out to be the best throw you have all day.